Hello, everybody. My name is Jeff Lukens, and I am coming to you at this moment. I'm live because this wouldn't work if I weren't live, but I'm coming to you on this video from Sioux Falls, South Dakota. Sioux Falls, South Dakota, you look it up on a map, the very southeastern corner of South Dakota, and this is where I've lived for a long, long time. And I am a retired high school biology teacher. I taught high school for 35 years right here in Sioux Falls, South Dakota, and I retired a few years ago. And since that time, I have been working with teachers in their classrooms, uh, using technology, how to implement technology in their classroom, how to do STEM activities in their classroom. I've developed a few activities with some colleagues uh, for Texas Instruments, and I also do a lot of conference presentations and whatnot. So what we're gonna do today on this video is one of has become one of our most popular conference activities, one of our most popular conference sessions. And the, the session is called, or the activity is called the body of evidence. This activity, just a little background, uh, is under an umbrella of activities on the TI website called STEM, S-T-E-M, all caps. Everybody's familiar with STEM or STEAM, STEM Behind Hollywood. Uh, the idea behind this activity was, and behind all of these STEM Behind Hollywood activities, was to bring cool ideas and cool concepts into the classroom. So we use things like zombies, we use things like forensics, we use DNA, like CSI type of things as well, and thus several other activities. But this is one that we're going to do today. It's called the Body of Evidence, and the kind of a spoiler alert background is. Um, a, a team of forensic scientists and law enforcement find a dead body. And the, the idea is to, the task and the goal is to identify who this person is, the dead body, who that is, based on a whole bunch of evidence that we're gonna work through in this activity. So let's go ahead and get started. I'm gonna go ahead and share this activity, share my screen with you. And I'll just get rid of me up here because you don't want to see me. You want to see this. And this is actually the first page in the activity. All of our activities um, are sort of like PowerPoints. They're, they're, they have a whole bunch of pages in them. And you can see at the top of my screen right here, page 1.1, 1.2, 1 1.3, and there's more over here. This blue arrow tells me there's going to be more pages. And um, all of our activities, at least in the STEM Behind Hollywood genre, start with an image that is designed to get the attention of the user. And believe me, this image right here gets the attention of the user. Um, I actually spend time on this page and say, what do you see here? And most people are looking at the picture and they, they, they don't even look at the cool little three there that's in place of the E in evidence. But they say, well, that's a dead body. And there's no real evidence that that's a dead body, but it certainly looks like it could be one lying there on the ground with this STEM scene, do not cross crime scene tape. And then the subtitle of body of evidence is using clues from a decomposing body. Right there, you've got the attention of virtually every young person that you're going to ever deal with, and older person. Uh, using clues from a decomposing body to solve a missing person's mystery. So that's what we're going to take a look at today. We're going to walk through this uh, fairly quickly. I mean, we don't we have a limited amount of time. This activity in real life is much longer than the one you're going to see today. And when I say much longer, there are just a lot more pages in this activity. Um, but for the in, for the sake of time and uh, because we don't want to cloud up everything with a whole bunch of pages that really aren't that important to us right now. I deleted a whole bunch of pages uh, in this activity, but none of the ones that I deleted have any bearing on the outcome or any bearing on the, uh, the coolness of this activity, if you will. So let's go ahead and start walking our way through this. This is, like I said, the intent of this cover page is to grab the attention of a student so that they want to move on. And let's move on and, and uh, take a look at what we have next. So I'm going to go to page 1.2. I'm just clicking on these tabs. And the very first page of text is page 1.2. And believe me, when once those students have seen that first page of the supposedly dead body, presumably dead body, I should say, 
they will read this. They will read this page 1.2. And, and teachers who had just a struggle sometimes getting kids to read things don't have a struggle getting kids to read this because they, they do read it because they want to see what's going on with that dead body. So here we have a breaking news alert. And if I'm working this activity with a bunch of teachers or with a bunch of, of students, I give them a couple of minutes to read this page. And I ask them to tell me what they, what they believe from a forensics or crime solving standpoint. What are three or four important pieces of information on this page? And, you know, we can look at a bunch of them. And I'll tell you what people normally do. People normally look at numbers. It's kind of funny how people look at that. So they're like, well, one important piece of information is right there, that the person that they've discovered is between ages 30 and 50. Okay, so that right there narrows down our search quite a bit. Okay, we also know, or narrow down our, op our options quite a bit. We also know that this, this victim is male. So right there, that cuts the options in half. Going 30 to 50 cuts it down even more. And to cut it down even more, we've actually identified based on the time they went missing and various other pieces of evidence that we don't list here, that there are four individuals who are in play here. It could be a number of uh, only four individuals. So those are some of the things that people point out. They also say, well, the body was discovered in an open field just outside the city limits. That's all important. All of this stuff is important. Rarely, I think maybe only one time in the entire time I've ever done this activity with people, do, does anybody mention that as a very important piece of information? Not so much the time, but the date. July, at least in the United States, in the Northern Hemisphere, July is summertime. And there's a hugely important idea in all of science and that hugely important idea is the effect of temperature on rates of reaction. Now, you being, you're probably adults, I, I doubt if this is gonna be shown to an awful lot of young people, but we're talking about a, a process here called, oops, called decomposition. We're gonna decompose this body. Decomposition is a series of chemical reactions and reactions, chemical reactions, can, to a certain point, be enhanced or suppressed by adding temperature or adding heat or taking away heat. So here we are, July 18th, and it's probably pretty hot. Okay, so we got to keep that in mind. That's a hugely important piece of information. Where I live in South Dakota, believe me, we've had a, it's, it's been a pretty hot, dry summer where I live, hotter and drier than normal. So in July, it was pretty hot. If this said January 18th, not so much. In January in South Dakota uh, and in the upper Midwest, it's usually not very hot. And so the, the impact of temperature is hugely important when it comes to uh, reaction rates. And in this case, that reaction, series of reactions is decomposing a body. All right, so let's go to the next page. What we do in this activity is we have the student play the role of what's called a forensic anthropologist. Now, we call out, throughout this activity, we call out several uh, pieces of the team here that are gonna be working on this case. One of them is a forensic anthropologist. Another one you see here is a forensic pathologist. Another one is law enforcement, or the police are involved, of course, in this, in, this, uh, in this case. So one of the things we can sneak in on students here is, you know, there's some career opportunities that you may not have ever thought of before that could be available to you, could be open to you. And we try to call those out here. So we have the kids play the role of the forensic anthropologist here. So the, kind of the big shot of the case. We actually had in this activity a real life board certified forensic anthropologist help us with this activity. Her name is Dr. Diane France, and she is, uh, like I said, a forensic anthropologist, lives in Colorado, and is a wonderful lady and was a tremendous help 
to this. She was actually a consultant for several TV shows like Bones and that type of thing. So uh, she, she actually gave us the thumbs up to release this activity because she thought it was actually very accurate and very good. Now here's our first introduction to another word that keeps kids' attention, and that is maggots. Um, everybody, I think, is familiar with what maggots are. They're a fly larva, and they tend to show up on dead stuff, whether it be, in this case, a decomposing body or a piece of meat or something like that, or even vegetables. You might see maggots crawling all over those sometimes. Hopefully you don't see that too much, but, not, you know, but you get the idea. So maggots usually are found where there's dead stuff. So let's move on to the, to the next page. So the forensic pathologist finds trauma to the head. So here's just a little bit more background information. And as I mentioned before, believe me, students read this because they are now, even after a, only a couple minutes, they are totally engaged in this thing because they want to try to figure out who this person is. Here's another career potential, a forensic entomologist, which is an entomologist is a bug studier. And Dr. France said she knows people who are forensic entomologists who all they do is they, they study maggots, which I'm not so sure that would be something I'd want to do with my life, but they do. And they're very, very valuable to solving cases. So there's another option for you to point out to your, to the students. So now we have a, a conversation between the law enforcement officer and you and you are the forensic anthropologist. And this first piece is a conversational thing that is just about the, de the different stages of decomposition. And let's take a look at those. Here they are, there, there's actually more than five, but we kind of, kind of pared this down to five major stages of decomposition. From fresh, in other words, right when the, the person dies or an animal dies, and then to bloated, which you may have seen a roadkill or something like that on the side of the road and it gets all bloated up and, and that's one stage of decomposition. Then we have active decay. There's two stages of that. One of them has uh, maggots and the other one's really, the other one stage, the other stage of active decay really doesn't have maggots because the maggots are kind of running out of lifespan and they're running out of things to eat. And then finally, we get to the dry decay, and, and I think you can picture that like a mummif almost a mummified uh, body. So there's the different stages of decomposition. This is all going to come back to us now. We're going we're to come back and use this information later in the case. So here are our four guys that uh, we have identified as being the, the people who are still in the game. In other words, one of these four guys is our victim is our dead body. So we have Joby and John and Cal and Cy. And these dates are the date that they were reported to have been missing. So we can see that John has been missing, and remember this is July 18th. John has been missing since May 17th, so about two months. When I say this is July 18th, from the background information that we had on that news report. Uh, so he's been gone the longest, and then Cy Walker, uh, disappeared only just a little more than a week ago. And then we have Cal and Joby who are kind of in between those two things. Okay, so this is like foreshadowing. You're going to see these guys show up again, and we're going to try to figure out who the dead body is based on a bunch of evidence. Okay, so now you're going to see probably the, the cool factor of uh, the TI Inspire graphing calculator. It does things that most other handheld devices, unless you have an iPad or something like that, but graphing calculators aren't supposed to do what I'm gonna show you here. And by the way, I'm showing you this obviously on a computer. This is computer software, but the calculator itself will do the exact same thing that you're gonna see me do right now with this, this dead body. Here's a silhouette of a dead body. And what we're gonna do here is make two choices. We're gonna choose the temperature, of the environment at the time. Like we're, we're gonna have every kid choose a different one actually. And then we're gonna choose the level of humidity. Arid is just a word that means dry. So this would be like Arizona air and humid would be like Louisiana air, okay? Something like that. So um, we have eight different possibilities, four temperatures and two levels of humidity. And so what I usually do is divide this up and say, 
let's just make sure I say to the students, let's make sure we have all eight possibilities re represented. So I'm just going to do uh, one here. I'll do, I'll click on cool and notice what happens when I click on these buttons, the background color changes, which is pretty cool. I think that's pretty neat. So I'm going to go cool and I'll change that to humid. Okay. And it tells me what my conditions are that I chose over here. So now we're on day zero. This person just died. He's in stage one of decomposition. And now I'm going to click on the play button. And we're going to watch what happens to this dead body. And I'll just kind of be quiet. And you can watch. Here we go. So the black things are, are um, blowflies. And the yellow things are maggots. And that pink stuff is odor that's wafting out of the body. And you can see the body is definitely changing. You can see the day count. It's like a scoreboard. So we're still in stage three. There we go to stage four. And we're just going to let this run until we get all the way completed with the decomposition. We'll know we're completed because we'll be in stage five and the day count will stop. Now I know the day count is still going here on this one, but any second now, the day count will stop. Now, while this is happening, let me just tell you what you'll see and what your students will see on their calculators. As they, depending on what conditions they chose, this number will be different and it will take a different amount of time. So for example, if a kid chooses hot and humid, this number right there is way less because decomposition takes place much faster at a higher temperature. If they choose cold and arid or cold and humid, this actually takes, I can't remember how many days it takes, maybe 80. So it takes a long time. So that's right there. There's a great lesson in that. Temperature matters. And as the temperature increases, so does the rate of decomposition. Okay, next page. While that was being done, while the, while the body was decomposing, the data was actually being uh, stored for us and plotted. So here we have the stages, one, two, three, four. We don't have stage five because stage five is pretty much endless. I mean, it, it, once you get to stage five, there's no stage six. So there's no number here. But here we have the numbers of days that this body spent in each of those stages. <clears throat> so in day one or stage one spent about three and a half days, stage two and so on. And then we also give them a picture of that. So we have a bar graph and in this particular bar, we can see that the stage between stage three and four lasted the longest amount of time. So again, if we would have chosen cold and arid, these yellow bars would have been much, much higher, much bigger. We would have a lot more days for each of the stages. Whereas if we would have chosen hot and humid, you barely can see these bars. There's, they go so fast and there's not a whole lot of, of height to each of those bars. So great opportunity to compare and contrast data based on variables that are used in this activity. So here's kind of a, just a generalized baseline graph where we have the blue representing arid days. So we, here we have cold and arid, here we have cool and arid and so on. And the uh, orange bars represent humid. So right here, the kid can see that, yeah, humidity does play a, a role in this. Dryness causes decomposition to happen much more slowly because that bar is higher. So have, helping your kids read these graphs, <coughs> I would argue, is one of the most important things you can do to help a student understand science and math better, is analyzing graphical representations of data. Hugely important. And so we try to include as many graphs as possible in all of our activities. Okay, most of the pages, you remember a few minutes ago I said, I deleted a whole bunch of pages out of this activity. Most of the deleted pages were questions that the student is asked to answer along the way. But one of them that I actually kept in here was this. And I don't know if you noticed, but when that, that guy got done decomposing, some of his fingers were gone. And so we like to, we, you know, this is kind of gruesome, like it's really gruesome, but it's reality. This person was found out in an open field. And so a question we ask is, what do you think happened to the fingers? 
and some of the ribs. In other words, the, the cartilage that holds the ribs to the sternum right up in this area. And this really is thought provoking to kids because a lot of them, you'd be amazed as how many of them actually say, well, they dissolved away. Well, hopefully we can correct that. I don't think fingers aren't gonna dissolve. They're not soluble. Or maybe because we talked about maggots earlier, they're like, oh, maybe the maggots ate them. That's possible. But actually what happens typically, and doc, we have Dr. France to thank for this, and she, she went over this in great detail with us when we were constructing this activity, that it is unusual for, it, it always has been in her career, unusual for her to come upon a dead body that's out in the open somewhere that still has all of its fingers and toes or its ears, or its nose, because scavengers, especially where she lives in Colorado, lots of coyotes, lots of skunks, lots of you know raccoons, badgers, whatever, they eat what they can eat and eat it quickly. So fingers are small, they're like hors d'oeuvres, so the, the scavenger just gnaws those off or bites them off and then eats them. The cartilage in the ears and the nose is very soft, and that's an easy meal as well. So as gruesome as that is, that's the reality of this. And uh, Dr. France certainly opened our eyes to some of the realities of this line of work. So here we have another uh, conversation. And uh, this is actually about maggots, uh, which doesn't seem all that pleasant, but maggots are so critical to analyzing a scene where there's a dead body. If the maggots aren't there yet, the body probably hasn't been dead very long. If the maggots are no longer there, that means they, the body is probably either in stage three or stage four or more or past that of decomposition. But if the maggots are there and they're, they're crawling all over, kind of slithering all over the body, then the body is probably in a, a stage two of decomposition or stage three. So here's a question I also left in there because rather than kids just say, oh, maggots are gross, I don't like them, they're disgusting. Admittedly, they may be disgusting to many people, but they do serve a purpose. And we have to look beyond this dead body thing for the purpose. We have to look at what's called their niche or their role in their environment. And you think about without maggots or without the flesh eating uh, organisms and the decomposers, uh, think about the mess that would be there uh, with the bodies not decomposing or not getting broken down quickly. Okay, <clears throat> so it's time to solve the case. And this is a review of our conditions. We're going to say, we know it's July 18th. We know the conditions, or we're, gonna, we're going to say the conditions are warm and humid. And when we find the body, we find the body in stage three. Okay, so we're not finding a completely decomposed body. We're not finding a, a body that's fresh. There's a lot of maggots. The skeleton is a little bit exposed and there's a strong odor. Eventually there's no odor in these dead bodies because there's nothing, all the gases have been released from the body and there's nothing to decompose. So there's our conditions. So this is gonna look familiar now. There's our dead body. Let's go back here and review. So now everybody, all of my students then, would now set their parameters to be the same, warm and humid. <clears throat> so let's go ahead and run this. We've got warm and humid. You're gonna see the same thing basically happen to this person's body. There's the bloat stage and we're gonna get to uh, stage three. There we go. We're gonna just let this run all the way through. And because it's warm and humid, this shouldn't take as long as the one we did for practice, which was cool and arid or cool and humid. I can't remember which uh, level of humidity I chose. But here we are at about day 20, <clears throat> and already we're in stage five. So we're getting close to the end. We'll see how long this actually takes us to get all the way completed with the decomposition. Okay, there we go. So it took 27 days. I think the other one was like 54. So this took about half the time to get through the, the decomposition. Now this is also going to look familiar, but now we're going to actually use these data. Here's our data table. Now, if you remember, we found the body in stage three of decomposition. So let's go over here to this little spreadsheet, this little data table. 
and do some quick little addition. So stage one took 1.8 days. Stage two took 2.7 days. So, so far, if my calculations are right, we are at 4.5 days. And now the body was found in stage three. So we can ignore this 6.3 because we're not going to, that's irrelevant to us. But 7.2 is not irrelevant. So we are at 4.5 and 7.2, which is 11.7 days to the end of stage three, 11.7 days to the end of stage three. And we found this body in stage three. So it's somewhere between 4.5 days out and 11.7 days out. Okay, you with me? All right, let's take a look. Here's our guys, Joby, John, Cal, and Cy. Now I just take a quick look at that. And we're looking for somebody who has been missing since, now it's July 18th, we're looking for somebody who's been missing somewhere between four and a half days prior, so like July 13th and a half, basically, to 11 some days prior, which would be July 8th or 9th. No, sorry, July 7th or 8th. And the kids get so excited about this, you guys. Seriously, they, they get so, and teachers, adults get really excited about this because they're using all of these clues and they're, they're using their investigative work to say, you know what? I think that poor dead body belongs to Cy Walker because of the amount of time that Cy has been missing based on the data that we collected from our evidence. So now the last page of the activity says this. Now the congratulations are in order if they get it right, but you see that we inferred we didn't prove, we inferred that it was Cy Walker, that he tripped and hit his head and died at the scene. So he must have whacked his head pretty hard if he tripped in an open field and hit his head. And so we have all of these people who are involved in this activity and involved in this case who have agreed that this indeed is Cy Walker. Okay. You go through this activity with students, they're incredibly excited, they're incredibly engaged. It's probably an activity that would take at least one class period, if you have 50 to 60 minute class periods, maybe a little more, because sometimes working through these things takes a little bit longer, but I don't think it's time that is wasted. I think it's well spent time in virtually any science or math classroom. So there you go, you guys. I hope you enjoyed Body of Evidence. Please go on TI, TI's website, education.ti.com. Go to the activities tab and take a look at some of the activities that are available to you. Lots of math activities, science activities, STEM activities, and so on. So please go check that out. It's been great to be with you. I hope you enjoyed this. Have a great day. And if you're a teacher, have a great school year. We'll see you soon. Bye-bye.